Hey guys. So I'm going to be talking about newest. I am a recent member of love. Again, I've never used uh, to put myself in a, a group or a fandom like this, but newest is an exception. So I'm going to talk about the documentary now. I did a video on like my ASMR channel, which I'll put in the link in the description or I'll have a playlist of everything just to get in depth of like my initial um, thoughts on newest when I first saw them ever. Just to recap just a little bit. Um, I saw them first on uh, when they came back with Overcome in February 2016 and I love the song, but Again, like there's a lot of stuff going on. There's a lot of groups that, at the time, like uh, G Friend was popping, <laughs> BTS was popping. For I'm not a fan of them, but GOT7 was popping too. Like there's a lot of stuff going on at that time. So really, newest didn't just didn't grab my attention as um, uh, enough for me to really delve into, you know, them as a group or as people uh, individually. So. <laughs> After that, I was like, okay, it's a great song, but eh, I'll move on. However, Ren was, the visuals of Ren were really excellent. I loved the long hair. I love guys with long hair, so I loved Ren for that. But um, other than that, it didn't really grab my attention. Love Paint, it was fine. But I kind of missed, like, the dark fantasy element of, like, Overcome. I didn't really like the bubbly, like, pop, pop, really light look. So I was like, okay, whatever. And where you at? I was like, uh, I'm not a big fan of like house music or like, I don't know, still like not my, not really feeling it. And then Deja Vu came on and I was like, okay, this is my style. The slow jam, but like poppy feel too. Uh, Latin pop. I'm not really into Latin pop, but it was fun uh, <laughs> when they did it. Um, and again, that, that, that dark, mysterious concept came back again. I was loving it. Okay. But even then, I still didn't look into them. So, so, um, but finally, when we over was their recent kind of comeback. Uh, well, it was a comeback, but they made a couple of other stuff too as of late. But when they came out with Help Me, I was like, oh, okay, this, this, this is something here. I don't know what it is about that music video. Well, I do know, but like, I already explained it in the past video. JR killed it. Ren killed it. The song is great. The concept is great. I loved it all. So <clears throat> here I am being like, okay, <laughs> now I have to know more. You've made three great songs that I really, really enjoy. So now I have to dig into you guys some more. Why don't do that? So, um, I learned their names, uh, I learned, you know, just the basics of, like, you know, how old they are, and, like, just stuff like that, and, um, what I usually go to, I will get into doc into the doc documentary, but I need to say, like, my initial, like, w going into the documentary, what did I think about the group as a whole, because I didn't really know that they had so much, uh, like, uh, problems with their company slash companies so I mean I knew of that they were having management problems but like a lot of groups have management problems like that's not, that's not really new you know, like in the past you've heard of like EXO having problems you've heard of like BAP having problems so here and like they have problems like okay what other like okay that's not really that what of that you know I've heard it been there done that can we move on so I didn't really look into that. I just wanted to know more about the personalities. Like when I get into a group, I really like to know their personalities and how they are um, outside of just performing live. So my go-to is uh, Weekly Idol. <laughs> That's my go-to. Um, and long story short, if you guys have not seen, I'll link them. I'll link down, uh, the videos down below, the ones that I've seen with the English subtitles. And... Um, they are really funny. It shocked me how funny they were and how much, uh, and how well they got along. 
I was like, oh, wait, I can really tell that they actually do kind of like each other. Um, the one person that really stood out to me was Aaron. As I said before, like in the past, in, in the previous video, I wasn't really a fan of him performing. Like, I don't know, something was just weird about like how he came off. It's kind of like awkward. Um, so I'm like, okay, I'm not really a fan of Aaron. Everybody else is fine, but like Aaron's is a bit weird. And this is newest W. Like, this is not like I haven't looked into like, uh, like the original newest stuff, like Min Hyung or anything like that. Um, so Min Hyun, Min Hyun or Min Hyung? Look this up real quick. <laughs> so I'm not on good job pissed off. And I wanna know myself too. <clears throat> but yeah, when I saw them on like Weekly Idol, like Aaron like was laughing and he was like cracking up what like all the shenanigans that was happening. And I was like, Oh my god, it's Min Hyun, yeah. Mm hmm This is why you check guys. I was like, oh my god, like, I love when, like, they're actually, like, having fun. Like, that's just so good to see. I suppose, like, you get really used to, like, the group's just not having that much chemistry that it just seems normal. It's like, okay, they're not, like, that into, like, their interview or not into, you know, each other like that. Whatever, like, I understand they're humans. Like, they're not going to be on, like, all the time. Um, but, uh, I noticed that Aaron was, like, this is so goofy, and <laughs> when he did, like, Aegyo and stuff, I was like, oh my god, like, he's so weird, but it works, and then I found out that, oh, he's actually from America, I'm like, wow, that's actually very interesting, and when he spoke in English, I was like, oh my god, dude, I was like, it's kind of hot, <laughs> like, it's kind of hot, like, oh god, like, like, wow, okay, I see you speaking that fluent English, uh, so, yeah, that was interesting. So that was that. Uh, Beko, Beko, he's a bit more laid back when it comes to variety shows and like interviews and stuff. That's totally fine. Um, there has to be at least one person that's like calm in the group, <laughs> in any group. And Beko is that person. He's more like, okay, like I'm just here, like I'm just, I'm just chilling. Um, so I really appreciate. Um, I just love like he just he's he's just adorable <laughs> i mean he can't do agio which i respect it's like some guys i mean you don't ha i hate when they force these guys to do agio because this is like too much agio if you don't know is like uh when it's being cute the act of like really overdoing it and like being cute for your fans or whatever or just for anybody in general um for example like you know people do like this <laughs> it's not really cute but like 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 stuff like that right so um yeah this, this is funny that like you can tell okay like he's laid back we won't he's not comfortable with certain things not comfortable with agio like i like that individual personality i like that so like okay cool and again he can sing very well like i said before i think he's one of the strongest vocalists in k-pop right now this is my, my opinion so let's move on to jr or Jung Hyun. Jung Hyun. Uh, he really surprised me because, um, like, in the, music, in the music videos that I've seen, he's very, like, he has a lot of, like, charisma and sex appeal. So I did not expect for him to be, uh, like, very adorable. Like, like, so just, like, just, like, has a very, like, soft, uh, like aura or like like just personality it's very you can just tell like he's just like hmm like oh it's, like, it's, like, it's like comforting i think and i was like wow like, that's very interesting that like, he can like uh he has both like like very like to me like masculine Pers like a personality but also like a feminine personality because he can be he can be like charming and like um like all like mysterious and stuff but and like when he raps he's like really intense um but when you know he is like interacting with people he's very cute he's almost like like cute to the point of like being shy almost kind of like like he's very very humble that's like that's the, like a good way to say he's very humble and uh just oh uh, kill him <laughs> kill that <laughs> yeah so yeah so i was like wow that's very interesting so and he is my bias because of that reason i just something about him just like really just like attracts me to him like a lot um 
I didn't even know he was the leader at that point. I was like, oh, wait, he's the leader? I'm like, when I found that out, I was like, oh, my God, dude. Like, he's a perfect leader. Like, <laughs> like it totally makes sense. Like, you would think that um, either the leader would probably be, like, Aaron because he's the oldest or it'd be, like, Beko because he's, like, the so like, he's the manliest of the group uh, or Min Hyun because he's, like, the most popular one. But, no, it's JR. I'm like, huh, that's very interesting. It's like, okay. Um... So that was I, he's my bias because I think that he's very uh yeah, he has a very unique personality. Uh yes. Yeah, so and last but not least, I'll, I'll get into Min Hyun. I know I haven't talked that much about him because I don't know that much about him. Um, but I'll I'll get into him later on. But <clears throat> for now, let's talk about Ren before we get into the documentary. So Ren slash uh Min uh Minky. Mingia or Mango <laughs> as I found out that's one of his nicknames. Um he now he's very interesting because at first I thought, okay, like this this guy he he's very you could, he, at first you think that he's like very, very shy and docile because like just like his face is just so like cute and like just so just like innocent looking i was like okay like i don't really expect that much from him i kind of had the same it's like the same feeling i get when i see um Le uh leo from vix uh vix I, I like saying their, their name in korean i had the same feeling like that like Le leo is very um laid back very just like very docile um doesn't really say that much and like if he if he does have to do like a gig or something like silly like that, he's like really just like super shy. He can't even do it almost. So I thought that's going to be how like Mingi was going to uh, act. But I was definitely wrong. I was certainly certainly wrong because turns out that Ren is super energetic and extremely silly and extremely goofy. The first thing, um, the first variety show that I saw of them was on Weekly Idol, their most recent one with like the newer host, um, which I, I'm not a big fan of in general, but I will say that in this episode specifically, it was more enjoyable because <laughs> the, the, the lady host, I forget her name, but the lady host, she was like, oh wait, like Ren is super funny and he's super like goofy and he's, I love it. I'm like, yeah, you're right. Like Ren is extra he's so extra because you know as you as you guys probably already know he loves to dance and he loves to do dance covers especially of girl groups so when he does them like he is so uh, just off the chart like excited and and, and uh enthusiastic not energetic but well and that and enthusiastic it just threw me off I'm like oh my god and even in the uh the show he uh, she's like, wow, you don't seem like you're the type that, <laughs> that, that you seem like a shy person. And, he, and then he responds saying that, like, yeah, like at first people think that, you know, I appear like just like kind of like shy and docile, but like once like I get to like really express myself, then like I'm like the opposite. <laughs> I'm just like, wow, that's very interesting. Like not many people are like that. I mean, maybe some people are, but like it kind of reminds me of me. Like that's kind of like how I come off as well. I come off very, very shy. Um, it just, just eh, like, hmm. but uh, <laughs> but like once you once you get me going on like something that I really like love, I'm like a different, almost a different person. So I can I can definitely relate to him in that regard. Um, I did I do know that he's a fan of La Lady Gaga, which definitely makes sense because <laughs> he is very effeminate. He's still he's 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 masculine as well, Ren, but he's definitely very effeminate. I'm not sure if he's gay or not, but I would not be surprised. Either way, he is. I'm gonna call him a queen because he just he's just so damn confident, and I love that uh, when he dances or when he just expresses himself. He's he's like he's very strong feminine person uh personality or uh spirit. That's what I get. And guys can be feminine, too. I'm not saying that he's, like, a girl, but he's definitely a guy that has that very strong, um, like, uh, like, energy, I guess. So, so yeah, I thought that was very interesting. Like, huh, that's very interesting. 
So, um, oh my god, yeah, in, in the previous weekly, when uh, Donnie and Connie were there, when they did Weekly Idol there, it was just so freaking crazy. Oh, I, I just loved it. Not like crazy, but like just very energetic. I was like, oh my god, when he's doing those dances, I'm like, Jesus, dude, he knows every freaking dance. Um, every girl get, uh, every girl dance from Pletus entertainment i'm like oh my god this was a very uh this is a lot <laughs> and oh god i should just make a, a video just dedicated to this weekly idol show but i just say this this is a, a highlight that when aaron was talking about his story of like walking in on mingi uh naked while dancing <laughs> i was like so freaking relatable because mingi was like yeah you can tell them like it's fine and he's like and then aaron he was like yeah like <laughs> like he's very energetic like he's just like i just was sitting down and i guess like the living room or something or maybe his bedroom and he heard like this noise coming from minky's room and he's like what the heck like minky can you please keep it down and then, and then he, there was no response from him so he was like went in he actually got his phone ready to like film him <laughs> and then when he, when he opened the door he was naked and then, and then minky he was like oh my god dude <laughs> and i and there was like oh my god like what the fuck just happened so and, and minky and now like minky's cool that he's like yeah that was that that happened um you have to understand the reason why i was naked is because when you dance very hard you get it really hot and i'm just like dude same like i live with my mom right and she keeps things very like the temperature is usually high like she likes things to be if she had it her way it would be like 80 80 degrees all the time even in the summertime all the time so it was very hard for me to dance because like i try to just wear like just like a shirt and that's it <laughs> like, not even bob's like a long like shirt that like at least cover up my butt or something so i can dance um and not be like super super hot and exhausted uh, so I, I definitely understand where where ren is coming from in that regard um because i'm like yeah man that's true <laughs> i was like you never heard that kind of story in cape like at, at on a variety show in K-pop, like, ever. I've never heard that kind of story before. And that just, again, it shows that how close they are because I'm like, wow, like, <laughs> they don't even seem, like, embarrassed or shy to say that. It's like, yeah, that, that happened. Um, and Aaron was just cracking up through the whole story. So I was like, wow, he's a, he's a cool bean. I like you, Aaron. I like you. I'm accepting Minky's craziness. I love it. So, yes. Oh, boy. So let's get into the documentary. I'll have a timestamp because I'm sure some of you guys just want to get into how I, feel about the, how I feel about the documentary. But again, this is by Lei Naran. Um, and again, links are in the description. The microphone is going to be off. Yep. So... <clears throat> I was scared to watch this. <sighs> oh, wait, okay, okay. I have to talk about Andrew Yang too later on, but we'll get into that right now. So, I kept seeing this thumbnail in my um, recommendations on the side of every video, every newest video that I've seen. I'm looking at this thumbnail in the title. I'm like, I don't even want to see it. I'm gonna be sad. I know I'm gonna be sad when I see it because I've heard that they've had a hard time, and now I've grown to really, really enjoy these guys a lot like, a lot, a lot. And I just don't want to see them having a hard time, like, oh god. But I knew that I had to watch it because after I found out that they're going to KCON New York, first of all, even before I knew they're going to KCON New York, like, my fandom like skyrocketed. Like, honestly, like, it took me this three days to be like okay i'm totally into newest they are my group no other group i care about right now <laughs> i want them to have a concert in america like so i can freak out and just have a good time i even looked up light sticks and and i want their i think they're having a new one coming out which i'm gonna wait until that that releases and save up for that hopefully i can save up for that <laughs> last shit to buy <laughs> when you get into a phantom like this but I even donated, like, I even joined, like, the newest, uh, cafe, the Dan Cafe, um, and, like, donated, like, $10 to, uh, some, to the person that, like, is, I 
in charge of it um to help with like buying like um albums or helping with streaming um i don't live in the korea i don't have a korean phone so i can't really participate in like the melon uh charts or anything like that or the melon streams so like i can't really do much to really help them out but i really want to help them out really bad because i know they're an underrated group and i know they've had a hard time as to know what kind of what they went through so yesterday i was like okay let me see this documentary click on it like, okay I'm not ready but i'm gonna get through it so basically it starts off with the just like the most adorable thing like video of them like one by one coming into a room meeting each other the first person is jung hyung jr because he is the first boy uh to boy trainee in plus i believe um ever <clears throat> i didn't know that plus was such a young company by the way but they are so <clears throat> i mean like after school uh is, is a pretty like is a, i think it's a, se a second gen uh group but relative to like the other companies like you think that they have their boy group like around time of like after school but <clears throat> i saw jung young go like dancing i'm like oh my god jung young i know you work so hard babe there you are and then i think like ren comes in next i'm like oh my god red i'm like oh my god with his long blonde hair which, by the way, like, I definitely noticed that, like, Ren, um, when he was younger, was, like, something feels, like, off about him to me. Like, I feel like he was way more, like, in his shell, more, like, not that, like, out there as he is right now. And maybe, like, a little bit angry. Like, I don't know. Like, I just got that vibe from him. Get that vibe from him. Especially, like, the music videos of, like, action and, um, kind of sleep, sleep talking a little bit. But, like like that and um face <laughs> face so uh yeah but here he looks pretty happy he's like oh my god yeah I'm not, you know toy minky yeah he's like really like he really likes uh, uh dunk young i was like oh my god and then there goes dunko they're cool coming in there and then oh minhyun comes in there minhyun looking so adorable minhyun I forgot to mention this. Minghyung reminds me of Jin from BTS so much. I'll tell you, they um they have very similar facial features, and Junghyung looks so much like Moonbin from Astro. I'm like, he looks like, like Moonbin from Astro, like for real. So I was like, that kind of distracted me. I'm like, I don't really like Astro, so I'm like, oh my god, dude, like, oh. Um, but, <laughs> but he does have a cute fucking face, though. Both of them do, but I'm not, like, again, I don't know that much about Min Young as of right now, so I can't be into him, into him like I do the other four members. But I do recognize that he is a cute person, so, okay. And then the last person that comes in is Aaron. Quack, quack, Aaron. Um, came to Korea from his home in LA and joined as a singer, rapper, and dancer. Yeah, it's a lot. It's a lot of stuff there. So I saw that. I'm like, oh my god, I'm already sad. <laughs> Boy, and then the documentary. The documentary continues, saying that when they debuted with their title track, Face, it was like one of the biggest debuts. Uh in k-pop ever uh maybe for a boy group i think for i think for boy and girl group it was like one of the biggest debuts ever the f a song was so hot and mainly because of the messaging behind it it uh was honestly it reminds me of like no dream from bts um but i think uh news came did news came up yeah news came up before bts actually b uh news debuted uh 2012 and BTS came, uh, debuted 2013, so they were actually ahead of the game when it comes to their concept of, like, uh, how school is kind of fucked up for certain uh, students and how uh, it's kind of, like, you know, like, bullying, mentioning bullying, mentioning, you know, stuff like that, the negative aspects of school. You know, it was, like, more like punk, like, punk rock pop uh, <laughs> for, uh, yeah, for Korea. 
granted no more dream is not that much of a bullying it's more about like you know what do you actually want to do with your life like actually live your dream not just follow like the school uh we have to have school at some you know to start a certain level but you know don't be caught up in the system like that so um but yeah so it's similar like they're on similar like wavelengths but just different different messages and i guess uh for them face was you know to like stay strong um and not let people bring you down like that i assume i think i don't really like the song that much um but i think that's what uh that's why it, like it has such a big debut is because um it was very shocking for like a popular um group to 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 speak that kind of truth um in k-pop i'm sure back then so that exploded and uh then they came out with um was it action i think action was their next title track and i think like at this point they uh their company wanted them to start promoting a lot in J china and japan but i think they started with china first yes so Nah, da, 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 da. yeah they ranked 15th on melon first time uh they came out which is unheard of right yep the next comeback that came uh with a similar concept they did really well by rookie standards mm-hmm um i'm sh i think their their album sales were like s stable at that point but then they came back with their uh they came back with hello and they totally switched up the concept it was very funny because i actually love hello a lot like face and action are fine but i think i just i don't know like it's something i don't know like i like i like the punk rock pop genre but maybe i'm like past that now i don't know like <laughs> no i'm not past that i think like it was like you can tell um at least in face and action to me personally that it was definitely for like juniors and like teenagers you know it wasn't i would say it was immature but it was definitely a more juvenile like feel to it um more like a more like a disney like channel feel to it not that like i like for example well, I have to compare it to BTS's like Boys in Love or Danger. They do have a juvenile feel to it as well, but it's like a bit more mature. Just like a bit more mature, which I like those songs a lot. So I mean, hey, I'll mention BTS a couple more times in here as well. Um, but I have to compare them because they they are kind of similar. Like these two groups are kind of similar, but uh, in terms of like their their disco 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 oh my god discography. <laughs> so get back to hello hello came out and that's when their uh popularity started to drop their album sales started to drop because obviously when you go from like action to like r&b slow song like people are not gonna like that usually unless you like really fucking sell it um and it's funny i love hello because of that i love like this darker like not darker but just more like somber uh love song is r and B, which I love. It was poppy too. But I really like this style. But I can definitely understand how like if you're a Korean fan and you're like, What? I thought this group was this kind of group. Now you're turning into this kind of group. It's like, oh, I didn't expect that. And apparently they thought a lot of the uh popular opinion was like it was too like mature for this group it was like it was too too, uh, too much of a mature concept which is kind of like proves my point that like the previous songs were a little more juvenile so now they're like kind of maturing now people are like oh i don't really like that like what are you guys trying to do this is very funny so yeah and that, and that made me sad i'm like what i really like hello and that's when they started to drop i'm like oh boy so that's that and then again, their company was trying to promote outside of Korea, which that really hurt. I'm like, oh fuck, dude. And then they came back with um, another change of concept, which is sleep talking, which is just just pop. Like, 
um very light bubbly but their album sales still uh, uh start to decline right uh now they're now they're promoting it in chinese with newest m which you don't know uh they don't do that do it that much right now but m stands for mandarin i believe and uh like i know exo used to do this and maybe ghost generation used to do this too but um these groups used to debut in chinese a lot in, in china a lot now groups just um just kind of focus on J- uh, japan but i didn't even know about this i was like what they had another uh a chinese member they added I'm like what like that's very bizarre so that's when things really started to get weird with the group um apparently it was very badly managed uh i think jason was his was his new guy's name i think um yeah jason so yeah and he looks like he'd be a cool person maybe but again this is the bad situation i think just like a really awkward situation that and, and this is awkward um because of the debut news were inactive in korea it took a long time for them to make music okay so 10 months later oh rebirth happened at this point oh my god ren has his hair cut now it's interesting has like short cut um he's out with the blonde hair so that's interesting uh at this point they you know they're really desperate uh really desperate for like, their album to go well because now like now like you really had like the the company has put so much money into them i'm sure they have to make that back somehow this is how any company has to run especially in the entertainment industry especially in k-pop um you know that's the, this, this is kind of like a gamble almost when you invest so much into a group and if you don't make it back then you know it's more of more of a chance of the group to uh disband so they're like freaking out about this because they were number one i can imagine like if you're number one you're like holy shit like hey we're, we're gonna be superstars dude like come on what's up and then things start declining super fast and it's like oh boy you start to freak out a little bit i totally understand that totally understand that <laughs> i get that way sometimes too when like i look at like my youtube stats like oh my god i'm like declining a little bit no i'm becoming irrelevant ah people hate me and it's like it's not even that big of a deal but but imagine that feeling to like this large of a uh a degree it's like holy fuck that, that must be terrifying really so at this point i'm like oh boy i'm starting to feel sad this is not um now i'm feeling sad for them because goodbye bye this came out when this came out um 2014 um yeah at that point like i i did not hear of newest at all i just got into k-pop and really i got into k-pop through like tvxq and like girls generation aoa sistar um things like that so yeah and this uh the song failed to chart at all sad because it's okay it's an okay song yeah it's not like the best song of theirs uh but it's okay for me um and there would be no korea comeback for over a year yeah at that point like you're especially in internet land like you if you don't come back for like six months you, you really start to be like irrelevant which is sad i think but makes them maybe because i live in america so i'm so used to like groups taking like a year or two years or even any artist they're taking like a couple of years before they go back like have a have a hit or have like uh, a new album it's just like normal um so so but i can see that when korea is so um so many people uh it's so competitive and so many companies are trying to like crank out these groups all the time yeah over years that's a that's a long time to be out so yeah and i, I think it's very this is very interesting. Yeah, 2015, a generally difficult year, year for them. They came out with the song Na Na Na. Now, I haven't really listened to like these songs like extensively because I honestly feel like sad. Like I don't want to listen to these songs. Like this is really like it's gonna be sad because like, it was a really bad time in their careers. So, like I don't know if I'm gonna really enjoy listening to these songs. <laughs> like oh boy, but I have to eventually. Cause I want to get full context of this group. But 
yeah, this, uh, I'm starting to see that, okay, they really want to become more of a mature sounding group, um, which they have achieved now, but I can tell, like, in 2015, this is, like, the seeds of them, like, really trying to mature their sound, which is very interesting, um, a lot of groups tend to just, uh, or a lot, of, I think a lot, of, they tend to, uh, focus these groups on, um, being, like, poppy, very, like, songs that they can play in the club, or, like, you can really, really dance to and have fun with, but they're taking a different direction, um, which I think is admirable, too bad that they, you know, they weren't doing well, uh, chart-wise, because they focus mostly on Japanese promotions, I guess, like, the Chinese, uh, <laughs> uh, group uh members gone now officially i think um really saying total of four japanese albums it's a lot of fucking albums dude by the way i really don't like how like these freaking companies like pander to japanese so much or japan so much like, i know they have to but, like i just don't like it <laughs> it's just like annoying it's like g friend does it now i'm just like oh jesus like it's just like too much but, uh, bts bts has kind of earned the right to do it because like they've done so much in korea that like they kind of earn it really but like it's still annoying because I know it's just like it's just pandering to me. So yeah, uh, but yeah. Oh boy. Oh yeah. And this right here, I didn't know about this. Beko uh, was diagnosed with a vocal cord, vocal vocal cord polyps that year, and had uh, to halt activity for a few months to undergo surgery. Yeah. So I didn't know what polyps were necessarily until <laughs> coincidentally. And not even because of this video, because I just wanted to look it up on my own regard. Like, I have really bad, like, nasal, uh, like, uh, sinus. I guess it's sinuses. But, I don't think I, I don't think I have, uh, pull-ups. Pull, uh, if that's how you say it. I don't think I have that, but, like, my nose is, like, always stuffy because, like, I have, like, because of my allergies to pollen. Like, all year round. My nose is just, like, like clogged, like, hat, like, just, like, in half. So it's hard for me to breathe through my nose. That's why like, I'm a mouth breather. I breathe through my mouth. <laughs> but now I know, like, oh my god, that's terrible. Like, pulse are like really, like, they're like, you can imagine, just like kind of like little like balls of like flesh, like just stuck in your in somewhere in your like uh in your tube, your nasal tube or your I guess your throat tube at this for the with the beko. So yeah, anyway, <laughs> it's kind of gross to talk about it, but yeah, it happened. But he did recover many weeks later, so that's good. He has a beautiful voice, so that's nice. Oh, boy. Okay. Apart from releasing a digital single, they were on complete hiatus from career promotions, further weakening their fan base. Yeah. In addition, there were speculations that their management company in Japan, Ariola, uh, made them work in poor conditions. Now, this is where it gets really fucked up. We're not even halfway through this. <laughs> this i'm gonna speed through this because like i just i guess i'll make like a part two to this documentary uh review uh it's done very well by the way like you know just like the music pacing having the subtitles in there uh it's really done really well but we'll end with this right here that apparently labels were uh mistreating the group uh, perhaps physical and sexual harassment, perhaps. Um, and at this point, like the newest cafes and like the fans who were like com like complaining this and like they're like, oh why are th why isn't this being like reported? Like apparently this is happening. I don't know how they knew if like the companies didn't put it out, but like word got out. Um, <laughs> you know people talk and. Yeah, like the the slight here, like excessive physical contact, face touching, squeeze the members' cheeks with their fingers, cup their hands around the member's face, touch their members' essential body parts. Right. I don't know what that entails specifically, but if they if that's what was said, I can't even imagine like what was actually happening because usually like they tend to like minimize what has happened. So I hope they weren't sexually harassed, but they probably were, which is a shame. Um yeah because they're really sweet guys so i can see how like they would people would try and uh take advantage of like their sweet personalities uh god especially ren i just i just hate that so much that would just drive me up the freaking wall 
But yeah, so um, obviously, uh, the company did nothing did nothing to stop this. So just swept under the rug. And now there's a Tokyo concert. JR. Boy, yeah, this part kills me right here. This is when I had to stop watching the documentary and like just pause. So I was like, oh my god, like <laughs> JR crying. I'm like, no, I know it's genuine too. I was like, no, JR. He's saying how like he promised his members that they would he would be the best leader and they would, you know, be a good group, like they would achieve their dreams and like be something. And he said, like, you know, up, up until now, like, I, I failed on that promise. He's just crying on stage. I'm like, oh, my God. No. He had, like, blonde hair at this point. I'm like, no. Tucker, no. I'm like, ugh. I can't. My heart breaks for him. Just breaks for him. But, yeah. So, I'll we'll have to continue this um I'll just review the documentary later on because I'm this is 40 minutes long. <laughs> We're not even halfway through. <laughs> I mean, like we, we have to talk about. I'm gonna talk about produce 101 next um next episode. That's like the main thing. The re- the rest of this talks about is produce 101. Just their general like uh like um in the newest W. So yeah, for you guys that like don't like to watch like multiple videos, I'm sorry. Like I have to though. It's, it's becoming way too long. <laughs> Hopefully you like me enough to like continue on. And honestly, I just want to put this on the record. Just like on the record, this is how I feel about newest. I want to support them as much as I possibly can, and this is the best way I knew how to do it. Just talk about it and just just tell you how I feel, and hopefully um, just get to spread the word that they're an amazing group, I feel. So, again, I'll talk about the rest of this documentary, and uh, you know, I'll have links of the previous episode and the next episode when it comes out. Hopefully YouTube has their, like, has recommendation of, like, the next video over there, but they don't. There'll be links in the description below. So... Yeah, guys, I appreciate you guys watching this video. I've made this far. Kansanida. Toma Kansanida. And we're going to talk about Andrew Yang later on, too. Yeah, I got to get into that. Mm hmm. We will. Okay. <laughs> That's it. Again, thank you so much for watching, guys. Bye.